This is Autofocus, the Philippines' premier motor show. Here are our features on this episode of Electronic Magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market. A compact SUV crossover from Honda, the CRV VX Turbo CVT AWD, and a premium pickup from Jeep, the Gladiator Rubicon. Plus, a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two MPVs, the Hyundai Stargazer 1.5 GLS Premium IVT versus the Toyota Avanza GCVT. On Autopedia, we'll talk about the installation and tuning of UniChip. And together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the highlights of the Isuzu D-MAX Limited launch as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus, and we're right back after this short break. Into new heights. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this episode of Electronic Magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Honda. The CRV is Honda's best selling global model. Let's find out why this is so with a review of the 2024 Honda CR-V VX Turbo CVT All-Wheel Drive, the sixth iteration of the compact SUV now available in the country. The Honda CR-V has a rich history in the country. The Philippines was the first to assemble the comfortable runabout vehicle outside of Japan. And Honda Cars Philippines can't roll out CRVs out of its Santa Rosa factory fast enough to meet the demand back in the day. Over the years, the CRV continued to be one of the sought after Hondas in the local car market, even after Honda discontinued local production and sold it as CVUs. In recent years, the Honda CRV began facing more competition with the entry of more small and mid sized SUVs, including those from Korea and China and Honda's entry into this segment is the 6th generation CR-V. The Honda CR-V has grown over the years to straddle between the compact and mid-size SUV segments. Honda has brought in three variants of the 6th generation CR-V, the top-of-line RS EHEV eCVT, and the mid-level VX Turbo CVT AWD and the V Turbo CVT. At 4,691 mm long, 1,866 mm wide, and 1,691 mm tall, and with a 2,700 mm long wheelbase, the Honda CR-V VX Turbo CVT AWD is taller with a higher ground clearance of 208 mm than its siblings. The Honda CR-V comes across as an elegant and stately SUV with sleek proportions and a stance and profile that merely hint at sportiness. Honda has equipped the CR-V with many of the advanced exterior lighting and features expected in top-grade SUVs, full LED headlights with auto-on-off function and high-beam support system, LED DRLs, sequential front turn lights, LED front fog lights, and side turn signal lights integrated into the door mirrors. One can adjust the headlight beam elevation manually on the CR-V VX and the V-Turbo, while the top-of-the-line RS EHEV features auto-leveling function. 
The VX Turbo and the RS EHEV feature piano black grille while the VT Turbo is differentiated by its high comb grille with chrome bar. The stately look carries over to the rear with just touches of sport with a tailgate spoiler that features an LED high mount stop lamp and shark fin antenna. The power tailgate comes with a walk-away close function. Other exterior features on the CRV VX Turbo include rear windshield defogger, rain-sensing front wipers with integrated washer nozzle, and intermittent rear wiper with washer and auto wiper on reverse, roof rails, and black painted mudguard. The VX Turbo and the V-Turbo ride on 18-inch silver aluminum alloy wheels wrapped by 235 60 R18 103H tires. Honda is known for combining elegance and modernity in cabin design and amenities. The 6th generation CRV manifests this quite effectively in a roomy and comfortable cabin. The CRV VX Turbo as well as the V-Turbo is a 7-seater with 3 rows of seats, all upholstered in leather that also wraps the shift knob. The driver gets an 8-way power adjusting seat with memory. The front passenger seat power adjusts 4 ways. The second row seat for three splits and reclines 60-40 and come with one action sliding seat to help with ingress and egress into the third row seat for two that splits and reclines 50-50. The VX Turbo Cabin features wood accents that soften the piano black finish. The RS EHEV features brushed metal accents. The dash is highlighted by the 10.2-inch full digital instrument cluster that provide all the important information a driver needs including speed and time range and fuel, driver attention. Also on the dash is the 9-inch touchscreen for the audio system with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Audio, Bluetooth, hands-free telephone and audio streaming, USB input, 8 speakers. On the RS EHEV, the audio plays through a Bose 12 speaker sound system. Catering to much of the needs of our digital gadget age, the Honda CR-V VX also comes with a 15-watt wireless charger to augment the USB-A and USB-C charging ports found in the cabin. Also combining retro and modernity is the dual and tri-zone automatic air conditioning system that features rotary control knobs and digital display and illumination, as well as rear aircon ventilation on the center console and roof. Other comfort and convenience features on the VX Turbo include power windows, power door locks, ambient lighting, 12-volt accessory sockets in front, and the cargo area, door pockets. The VX Turbo and RS EH EV comes with smart entry system with smart key card. Driving the VX Turbo is a breeze. The DOHC DI VTEC turbocharged 4-cylinder 1498cc gasoline engine turns out 190 PS at 6,000 RPM and 240 Newton meters of torque that maxes out at 1,700 to 5,000 RPM. All that power and torque is set smoothly to all four wheels via a continuously variable transmission and real-time all-wheel drive system. The leather-wrapped three-spoke steering wheel provides good and comfortable grip, and its tilt and telescopic function, combined with a power-adjusting seat, allows driver to easily get the perfect driving position. Hondas are known for providing electric power steering that balances ease and solid control. Steering is light at very low speeds, like when parking and progressively gets heavier at greater speeds for more stable handling. The steering wheel also comes with controls for such things as the audio system, the multi-information display, adaptive cruise control and voice assistant function. Helping make driving the CRV more pleasurable is a suspension using front McPherson struts and multi-link system at the rear that is soft enough to ride over bumps well yet firm enough for good stability rounding curves at speed. Adding to confidence in braking knows the CRV comes with 17-inch disc brakes on all four wheels, ventilated in front and solid in the rear. The CRV also comes with electronic parking brake. Parking the CRV VX Turbo is also a breeze with a multi-reverse camera with 360-degree view and eight parking sensors, four in front and four in the rear. All three variants of the sixth generation CRV available locally come with Honda Sensing, a suite of advanced driving and safety features. These include adaptive cruise control, low speed follow, collision mitigation braking system, lane keeping assist system, road departure mitigation, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, auto high beam, and lead car departure notification. 
Honda has also equipped the latest CRVs with much of the safety and driver assist features and tech now standard in top grade vehicles. CRVs come with a nearly full alphabet of safety systems that include ABS, EBD, VSA, HSA, ESS, AHA, HDC, and TPMS. Also standard in the Honda CRV are dual SRS airbags, side airbags, side curtain airbags, knee airbags, 3-point ELR seat belt for 7, seat belt reminders for front and second row occupants, child safety lock, child seat anchors, driver attention monitor, Honda Lane Watch. At this time, Honda lists the CRV RS EHEV ECVT at 2.59 million pesos, the VX Turbo CVT AWD at 2.28 million pesos, and 2.1 million pesos. The Honda CRV has everything needed to also make it Honda's best seller in the country, or even the best seller in its segment. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track and the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Life should be filled with stories to be liked and loved. Elevate your drive with the new Honda City. Take value and performance to the next level so you can view more places and check into new experiences with Honda Sensing, you can do all these with peace of mind, with its modern design and advanced features. The new Honda City is for those who are ready to step up their game. The new Honda City. Elevate your drive. Welcome back to Auto Focus. We now have the latest auto industry news. Porsche Philippines celebrated 75 years of Porsche sports cars with a Festival of Dreams highlighted by the local launch of the Cayenne e-Hybrid. The Festival of Dreams marks the 75 years since the Porsche 356 No. 1 Roadster received its license to operate on the road in Germany in 1948. Porsche expands its local lineup with a new Cayenne e-Hybrid, which is powered by a 3.0-liter V6 turbo engine paired to a new electric motor integrated into the 8-speed automatic transmission. Together, the combustion engine and electric motor achieve a combined output of 470 horsepower and 650 newton meters of torque. Porsche sees the addition of the Cayenne e-Hybrid further boosting the jump in local sales in the local market. Porsche Philippines also held groundbreaking ceremonies for a state-of-the-art Porsche Center that will soon rise beside the current PGA Cars building along Edsa Green Hills. Toyota Motor Philippines showcased and offered free test drives of its extensive lineup of hybrid electric vehicles at the Go Electrified with Toyota event held at the Bonifacio High Street Amphitheater. The event featured Toyota's complete lineup of electrified vehicles including the HEV variants of the Corolla Altis and Camry, the SUV's Corolla Cross and RAV4, the 7-seater HEV Zenix, and the electrified premium van Alphard. At Toyota Motor Philippines, we have a uh, leave no one behind uh, philosophy meaning uh, on the road to electrification and carbon neutrality. We acknowledge that uh, it will only work, we can only get a positive environmental impact if we go for mass adoption of electrified vehicles. So that's why we are offering a very wide range of electrified vehicles or hybrid electric vehicles for the uh, public to choose from so that they can shift to an electrified vehicle that suits uh, their lifestyle and their needs. Sister brand Lexus also showcased and made available for tests its own lineup of electrified vehicles, including its first battery electric vehicle, the Lexus RZ. GAC Motor Philippines has been active in conducting group media test drives to showcase the new convenience features, ride and handling, and advanced driving assist and safety tech of the newly launched vehicles. 
Among the more recent media test drives is the one that showcased the M2 GAC Motors entry to the very competitive compact crossover SUV market. Uh, welcome to the uh, GAC M2 drive. So basically, it is the experience that we can provide for our friends in the media of the new GAC M2. It's one of the newest models that we launched this year where you'll be able to experience the, everything good about it. It's, of course, the looks, the interior, the design, the drive, and all the features inside. According to the event organizer George Ramirez, the itinerary for the test drive was designed to showcase the many new features of the m including the advanced driver assist and safety features. We could easily have gotten here by just going straight highway and getting in straight highway going back. So what I did was I turned off in Calax where it's an empty highway and then we can focus on things like adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, those kind of functions in a safe manner. Then we started climbing up to Tagaytay. Going down was the more interesting winding roads, sharp, really twisty winding roads to get to feel the handling of the car, how it feels in that environment. The going up and then the rest of that drive, it's just a country road, but you can now enjoy just relaxing in the car and enjoying the car to see how it, that would feel. So you're giving different uh, situations. No? Like for example, on the way home now, I'm making it straight all the way back to Alabang, and that, that'll be just all 100% highway. Since its launch, the MQ has done well in sales for GAC Motors, even as the GS8 M Zoom and the GS8 remain the top two best sellers in the GAC lineup. Uh, it's doing okay. So it's ideal for the Filipino families. That's what I can, I can say about it. The customers who buy this love it because of the room, the size that it can uh, provide uh, for their families, uh, older families in fact, uh, at the right value as well. So. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Auto Focus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Here's our comparison of the latest automobile models belong to the same category on Head to Head. In this Head to Head, we pit two subcompact MPVs the Hyundai Stargazer 1.5 GLS Premium IVT and Toyota Avanza GCVT in a spec-to-spec -spec comparo. Subcompact 7-seater MPVs are now popular among those looking for affordable family vehicles that offer both space and comfort as well as all the modern conveniences experienced in today's connected world. This is not lost on automakers and distributors now competing to provide as much value for money performance, comfort, convenience, and safety features at competitive price points in respective subcompact FEV entries. In this segment, Hyundai offers a Stargazer 1.5 GLS Premium IVT at a listed price of 1,288,000 pesos. Toyota offers the Avanza G CVT at the listed price of 1,059,000 pesos. The 2023 Hyundai Stargazer 1.5 GLS Premium IVT is 4,460 mm long, 1,780 mm wide, and 1,695 mm tall. With a 2,780 mm long wheelbase and a minimum ground clearance of 185 mm. The Toyota Avanza GCVT is 4,395 mm long, 
1,730 millimeters wide and 1,700 millimeters tall. It clears the ground by 190 millimeters. The Hyundai Stargazer fascia features a thin white horizontal line, or DRLs, large LED headlights integrated with turn signals, front fog lamps, black-coated chrome grille. The rear is highlighted by the H-signature tail lamps. The top-of-line Stargazer also features chrome outside door handles, body-color rear-view mirrors that come with turn signal lights and electric folding function, a rear spoiler with high-mount stoplight, shark fin antenna, and two-tone 16-inch alloy wheels. The third generation of Onza looks as contemporary as other latest generation Toyota crossovers, including the Rays which shares the same DNGA unibody platform. The slim split-type LED headlights, the large and deep black trapezoidal grille, the character lines on the side all help to project a sleek modern look. Toyota also equipped the Avanza G with LED clearance lamp, front fog lamps, side view mirrors that power adjust and fold and feature turn lights, LED rear combination lamps with reflectors, intermittent front and rear wipers, rear spoiler, high mount stop lamp, and fin type antenna. The Stargazer 1.5 Premium comes with a smart keyless entry with push-button start as well as remote engine start function. The cabin features a lot of leatherette material for seats and trim. The leather-wrapped steering wheel tilts and telescopes and comes with buttons and switches to control the audio as well as cruise control. Providing flexible seating and cargo arrangement are the middle row seat for three that splits, double folds, and slides 60-40. The third row seat for two splits 50-50. The dash and instrument panel features a 4.2-inch Supervision TFT instrument panel and vents and rotary controls for the air conditioning system. The Avanza G CVT comes with keyless entry and push-button start. The cabin is now much roomier than its predecessor. Two-tone fabric upholstery makes it homey despite the carbon fiber accents. Both front seats slide and recline while the second row seat for three slide, recline, and tumble to provide what Toyota calls long sofa mode. That means it tumbles flat. The third row seat for two also tumbles flat to provide the same long sofa mode. The instrument cluster features a 4.2-inch TFT multi-information display between the circular speedometer and tachometer. The steering wheel comes in plain urethane, but it tilts and telescopes and features switches for the audio and multi-information display in the Avanza GCVT. The shift tray at the top of the line Avanza is also plain urethane, but features sequential shift function. All Avanza variants come with power windows, power speed sensing door locks, air conditioning with digital controls in the front console and manual controls for the rear vents. The infotainment system on the Stargazer features an 8-inch touchscreen display, Bluetooth connectivity, voice recognition, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Audio, and four speakers plus two tweeters. A tray for wireless charging of cell phone comes with cooling function. Infotainment and connectivity at the top of the line Avanza come with 8-inch audio display system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, AM FM radio, Bluetooth and USB portal, and four speakers. The Stargazer is powered by the SmartStream G1.5 engine with a 1497cc displacement that generates 115PS and 14.7kg meter of torque mated to Hyundai's Intelligent Variable Transmission or IVT driving the front wheels. The Stargazer suspension system uses McPherson struts in front and Hyundai's CTVA or coupled torsion beam axle in the rear. Stopping power comes from 15-inch disc brakes in front and 9-inch drums in the rear. The Avanza GCVT is powered by a 2NRVE 1496cc engine that makes out 106 PS at 6000 RPM and 138 Nm at 4200 RPM. Power and torque are set to the front wheels via a continuously variable transmission. The third generation Avanza has vastly improved ride and comfort compared to its predecessor, owing perhaps to its new unibody construction and the tuning of the suspension system featuring the front McPherson strut and rear torsion beam combo. Reliable stopping power comes from a brake system featuring front ventilated discs and rear drums. The Stargazer 1.5 GLS Premium comes with nearly a full complement of Hyundai's ADAS or Advanced Driver Assistance System, including Blind Spot Collision Avoidance Assist, Rear Cross Traffic Collision Avoidance Assist, Lane Keeping Assist, Driver Attention Warning, Safe Exit Warning, 
forward collision avoidance assist, lane following assist, tire pressure monitoring system, high beam assist. The Stargazer is also equipped with a rear view monitor and parking distance warning. Other standard safety features include hill start assist control, electronic stability control, anti-lock braking system, manual speed limit assist, rear seat alert, dual front, side and curtain airbags, and child seat anchors. Toyota equipped all three of Avanza variants with anti-lock brake system and vehicle stability control with traction control, hill start assist, 3-point ELR seat belts for 7, with driver and front passenger getting pre-tensioner and force limiter, ISOFIX child restraint system, and dual airbags. The Avanza GCVT shares with a mid-priced ECVT and EMT, back camera and rear sonar as well as a Toyota vehicle security system with alarm and immobilizer. The top-of-the-line Avanza is also equipped with blind spot monitoring and rear cross-traffic alerts, as well as side and curtain shield airbags. After checking out the listed prices and comparing the specs and features of both and looking, which would you believe provides better value for money? Take the lead. Are you into grassroots racing, slaloms, autocross, time attacks, and circuit racing? Do you like to keep your daily ride in tip-top condition? Do you want to improve the performance and ride of your vehicle? Then head over to Fix Stop Auto Service along 91 Congressional Avenue, Project 8 in Kazan City. Fix Stop Auto Service can level up the performance and ride of your daily rider weekend racer of all brands, models, and makes from Japanese, American, European, and all other global manufacturers. Fix Stop Auto Service offers preventive maintenance services as well as upgrades of brakes, suspension, and other mechanical works. Fix Stop also caters to all your needs for performance tires and accessories to make your dream vehicle stand out on the road or for just your enjoyment. For appointments, call 0917-803-8283 or message us on our Facebook page www.facebook.com slash fixstopautoservice. Hello, I'm Johan Tee from Sonax Philippines. We are at LG2 e Rodriguez and we will be showcasing our new DIY line, the what we call the Extreme Ceramic Series from Sonax. So first we have the Ceramic Active Shampoo. It's a car shampoo with ceramic coating properties. So to apply this, you need to put 50 ml to 10 liters. That's the ratio. So just put a few here. Put it in a bucket of water and agitate it a bit. After which, you can wipe it on the car. So after applying the shampoo, you wash it off with water. And after, you just wipe it down. Okay, so that's basically how you apply the ceramic active shampoo. This part where we put the shampoo, there's already a thin layer of ceramic coating because that's the purpose of the ceramic, the extreme ceramic line. So we'll just test it. So you can see there's already a few water beading hydrophobic effect. Just wash off the shampoo with water. You can just wipe it dry. So that's how easy it is to apply the ceramic active shampoo. So if you want instant ceramic coating on your car with washing, you can just get the active shampoo and you'll instantly have a thin, coat, thin ceramic ceiling on the paint. So that's how easy it is to apply the Extreme Ceramic Series from Sonax. For more information, you can visit our FB page, which is Sonax Page Official, our IG page, which is also Sonax Page Official, and TikTok page, which is also Sonax Page Official. So it's very easy to find us. Thank you.
Welcome back to All of Focus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. Isuzu is rolling out special edition variants of its pickups and SUVs to cater to buyers who like to stand out from the crowd. One of its latest special edition models is the 2024 Isuzu D-MAX Limited, launched and showcased at malls. Hello everyone, I'm Tetsuya Fujita, President of Isuzu Philippine Corporation. Tonight, we are launching our latest addition to the Isuzu D-MAX model lineup, our new Isuzu D-MAX Divitem. We are here at the launch of the Isuzu D-MAX Limited, and we have this new model of the D-MAX that is designed for the Filipinos who really love the active lifestyle and love uh, outdoor adventures. We can see at the front, there's a massive radiator grill with a uh, eye-catching Isuzu Red logo. So this red color is headed over to the front bumper guard, making this vehicle a more distinctive and natural appearance. And then on the side, you have this gray streak body graphics all the way to the back, adding a more premium to this uh, tried and tested uh, pickup. On top of this, we added performance function. The first is the 17-inch satin finish black alloy wheels wrapped in a 265-70 R17 all-terrain tires for greater traction and better handling. We also equipped this, uh, the front and rear suspension, with a monotube nitrogen charge shock absorbers plus a rigid rear shackle, adding lift to about 260 mm of ground clearance, making this D-MAX standing tall among the, the competition. The price of D-MAX is limited is at 1.580 million. So this is a uh, price positioning, this is competitive in the market today, considering the accessories that we have uh, equipped in this vehicle. So to know more about the, this new product, the Isuzu D-MAX Limited, so visit our website at www.isuzufield.com or visit the nearest dealership of Isuzu nationwide. Thank you. The new Isuzu D-MAX Limited is already available in all Isuzu dealerships nationwide. Thank you very much. The limited edition D-MAX can stand out in a crowd of its brothers in the Isuzu pickup lineup or even among its competition. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. This edition of Car Review takes a look at the Jeep Gladiator, an American brand premium pickup. So you like off-road adventures? Take your trail bike to where they can be most fun and challenging, or you can enjoy mountain biking more. Hiking, going where others fear to tread. Maybe camping is more your jam for long weekends, even glamping. Or if you're truly the adventurer, you go overlanding. All these activities need a vehicle that would have all the carrying capacity, all-terrain capability, 
toughness, reliability, the conveniences of modern living, and in this day and age, smart connectivity. So perhaps a pickup truck will do, and not just any pickup truck, but the Jeep Gladiator. Jeep has been around for decades now with a design that has achieved iconic status. One would recognize Jeeps anywhere, the design has virtually remained the same over the years. The vertical grille, the round headlamps, the protruding front bumper, the extended fender, and the flat roof. There's no mistaking that the Gladiator is a Jeep with an extended pickup cargo bed. The Jeep Gladiator manifests the wide stance and tall profile of a very capable off-road 4x4 vehicle. It sits high above the ground on 17-inch aluminum wheel strap by 245-75 R17 BSW all-terrain dueler tires. The Gladiator Rubicon presents a rugged minimalist exterior with body color 3-piece hardtop, fender flares and grille with platinum silver rings, black door handles and exterior mirrors with supplemental turn signals and spotter mirrors to check blind spots. The exterior mirrors are heated by the way. And the hardtop can be removed if one wants to feel the wind on your face on road trips. The rear sliding window features a defroster. The side steps help with getting onto the pickup with high ground clearance. The Gladiator features LED lighting for the headlamps, front fog lamps, and daytime running lights. The Power Dome dual vented hood adds a sporty but very functional touch. The rear of the Gladiator also projects a minimalist but functional look. The center high mounted stop lamp complements the LED rear lamps for added safety. The rear lamps look quite cool and modern in again a minimalist way. The cargo bed is spacious and can accommodate everything from bikes, surfboards, gear and equipment for enjoying the outdoors. The cargo bed features Mopar spray and bed liner and cargo tie-down hooks. Clearly showing that it is meant for off-road trails, the Jeep Gladiator comes with skid plates and shields for the fuel tank, the transmission and the transfer case. The overland and trail rated badges are just not ornaments. The Gladiator is powerful enough with a 3.6-liter V6 gasoline engine that generates 285 horsepower and 352 Nm of torque, made it to an 8-speed automatic transmission and the 2.72 Select Track full-time four-wheel drive systems. On full-time mode, the Select Track automatically switches from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive depending on the driving conditions. It delivers consistent, effective traction when four-wheel drive is needed to effortlessly conquer mud, rocks, ice, or snow, and then reverts to two-wheel drive on clear roads delivering impressive fuel efficiency. Add to this the stop-start dual battery system that also helps save fuel at stoplights and in heavy stop-and-go traffic conditions. The Gladiator ride and handling can be described as plush and comfortable even with the heavy-duty front and rear shock absorbers. This is great not only in off-road trails but also on paved surfaces. This makes the Jeep Gladiator a good weekday ride in urban settings especially as it comes with an all-comfort and convenient features that the successful and discriminating individuals expect in high-end rides. There's remote keyless entry with push-button start that gets one into the posh cabin with the leather trim seats. Wrapped in leather are the park brake lever, shift knob, and steering wheel controls which comes mounted with audio controls. The low back bucket seats are quite comfortable for long road trips. Six-way manual seat adjust as well as two-way lumbar adjust for the driver, four-way seat adjust for a front passenger. The rear seat for 3 folds 60-40 and features a rear armrest with cup holder. The steering column tilts on telescopes to get the preferred driving position. The Jeep Gladiator comes with a 7-inch TFT color display for the instrument cluster. There's also a display for the tire pressure monitoring system. Then there's the 8.4-inch touchscreen display with 4.5-inch system, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, GPS, and integrated to Alpine premium audio systems. There's an audio jack input for mobile devices, a USB host flip, and 12 volt auxiliary power outlet. Other standard comfort and convenience features include air conditioning with auto, temp control, and power windows. The Jeep Gladiator Rubicon supports circuit discerning owners with loads of tech to make driving safer. Parking a pickup truck is never more easier with a ParkSense rear park assist system and ParkView rear backup camera. Mitigating driver mistakes and miscalculations are the anti-lock four-wheel disc brake system, electronic stability control, traction control, electronic roll mitigation, hydraulic assist brake booster, hill start assist, and trailer sway damping. 
Also fitted for safety in the Gladiator are next generation front airbags, supplemental front seat side airbags, speed control, speed sensitive power locks, and Sentry Key Theft Deterrent System. There's a lot to like and enjoy in the Jeep Gladiator Rubicon for those who are into outdoor and off-road adventures and with truly active lifestyles. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Hey, today we'll be showing you how a Unichip is installed, how it is tuned, and what are the benefits of actually getting one installed in your car. Uh, here we have a 2017 Toyota Vios with the latest dual VVTi engine that already has an intake and a header. So we're going to be installing Unichip next on this car to get more power. In a nutshell, what Unichip is, it's a computer that goes on top of the stock ECU and we're able to program this to give different commands to the ECU that says, okay, give us more fuel, give us less fuel, give us more spark plug timing, give us less spark plug timing and among other things. More advanced features are we could use this to control additional injectors to supply a turbocharger, injector controllers for diesel engines, nitrous control, and sometimes also map switching. We can have up to five different maps for this one, such as if you want valet mode, total shutdown mode, immobilizer mode, and all of that. And this is where Unichip is installed. It's going to be installed very, very near the car's ECU, which in this case for the Vios, it's hidden behind the glove compartment. So it's eight wires to install. On most other cars nowadays, the computer box is usually found in the engine bay. Like if you have a Civic, you have a Jazz, you have a Focus. All the computer boxes are now found inside the engine and that's where Unichip will also be installed. So the way that we install it is we have to cut and splice a few wires. It's normally about eight. Those are power, ground, uh, throttle position, crank position, mass airflow sensor, among other things. So every joint we actually solder and then we shrink wrap and we tape over. So rest assured that nothing will get shorted, nor will it catch fire. That simply does not happen. This is a Unichip wiring diagram, only we have access to it, the official Unichip installer for the Philippines, which is us in Speed Lab. In the Unichip database, there are over a thousand cars that have diagrams for it. It ranges from something as old as a 1996 Corolla 4 AFA engine to the latest Ranger Raptor, which we're going to be available in a few months. So it's basically eight wires here. These are the eight wires that connect to the Unichip, then these eight wires connect to the wiring harness of the ECU. It's, by the way, just the wiring harness, not the ECU itself. We don't open this up, we don't touch this, so that remains as is. A little bit of history about Unichip. This has been around actually for the better part of 25 years. The guy who invented it, Peter De Vert, is Dutch. He currently lives in South Africa. That's where he produces it. I think he gets a special government grant from the South African government for that one. And then it's actually exported all over the world. Uh, you can check it out on the internet, you can check out all the reviews, it's there. It's Unichip because it really is universal. We can use it for pretty much anything with an ECU. Gas, diesel, Chinese, European, American, Japanese, Korean cars. As long as it's an ECU, most likely we can install Unichip on it. So there are still certain cars like this Toyota Vios, you cannot remap the ECU, you cannot change the settings inside the ECU, so your only option for tuning is with the Unichip. Alright, now uh, the Unichip is now connected to the ECU. For this particular car, we're using the Unichip Q4, which has an additional four wires to control the throttle because all cars now have electronic throttle. Uh, what this basically does is it equalizes the throttle opening because with all cars nowadays what happens is you step on the pedal this fast the throttle butterfly opens this fast that's the delay that everybody is complaining about with all modern cars you step on it like this it goes like this so what the unit chip does with the throttle control is it makes it one is to one you step on it fast it opens fast also 
So resulting in a mas malakas may bat na kotse. So right now, it's connected to the ECU, everything's working, the car's running, the engine is running, uh, it revs fine. There are no check engine lights whatsoever, so that means that the installation is done correctly and everything is working. Uh, with every unit chip installed, we actually put in a unique starting program depending on what the ECU is. Uh, in the Unichip database, there are over 100 starting programs for 100 different cars and 100 different vehicle models and makes and engines actually. So after this one, we're going to be putting the car on the dyno and we're going to be tuning it there to see what the final horsepower is. Uh, horsepower and torque actually. So stay tuned for that one. We're going to be putting it on now. Okay, we're done with the tuning of the Vios here with the unit chip and this is the results. This red line here is the baseline power. This already has our colder intake and our headers. So it's about 91 horses, which is actually pretty good for a 1.3 car. For reference, 90 horses or so is the territory of about 1.5 cars like the Jazz and the 1.5 Vios. This blue line here is after tuning with the unit chip. So at peak power, we're at 100 horses, so it's almost 10 horses more at 6,000 RPM. But the biggest gain here is actually, if you look at the torque graph on this side, at the initial step, there's about 6 foot-pounds here. This is even bigger, it's about 8 foot-pounds. Then this dip here is another 8 foot-pounds. So, and this is at the very critical 1,800 to 3,500 area where most of your overtaking happens. So the end result is a faster car, more powerful, a lot more responsive, and drive normally. Given this, you should see about 8 to 10% better mileage. So that's basically the whole unit chip install and tuning process. As from start to finish, it took us about three hours total from wiring up the car to putting it on the dyno to tuning it to getting out of the dyno. So it's probably less than half a day. And, and you walk away with 10 horses on a 1.3 Vios. For other cars, say bigger engines like a 1.8 Civic, it's anywhere from 12 to 15 horses more. For turbo diesels, we actually get 40, sometimes 50 horses more. The best part is when you sell the car, you can actually take the unit chip out install it in whatever next car that you're going to purchase be a gasoline car diesel car any brand as long as it has an ecu your unit chip can be installed in that and can be tuned again reused make more power for your new car that's our feature in autopedia this week taking care of your ride has been made easier and that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this episode of Electronic Automobile Magazine informative as well as entertaining. Check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. In honor of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, We Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.